Welcome back to the workshop, everybody. So glad you could be with me here today. I thought we'd actually do a project. Not just talk about planes and trains and automobiles, but actually make something. So I got to thinking, what's the, what's the first project that somebody should learn how to make? Well, how about a cutting board? I've got a few of them in process here. And uh, this one, I have uh, already flattened this side. This is tulip poplar, and it's quartered, quarter sawn. Okay, so this will be real stable. As far as durability, for an everyday cutting board, it will get nicked up and it will, it will wear. Luckily, you can plane it down and it'll get thinner. But the other thing that these can be used for are actual sandwich serving boards. So, uh, what I've got here is... Uh, what could be called a one by seven, which is six and three quarters. And I've got one foot sections that I cut off. And uh, proportionately, things look good. Yep, one, six and three quarters. Things look good when you use the uh, golden rule. The golden rule states that one dimension is a proportion of the other dimension giving it a pleasing look. And for real simplification, it is uh, the short length 6.75 times 1.618 so 10.92 so a 7 by 11 would be nice okay so we're going to work with this now I have a very sort of unique way of dimensioning the thickness of my stock. I use dial calipers, okay? I'll measure and this will give me a reading and it'll tell me where the thinnest section is and where the thickest section is. And this is pretty even right now. So this side has to get planed down and cleaned up. So let's do that. Now, when first starting out on a rough surface, you don't have to put any sort of pencil marks or anything, but if you want to, you can. And you work from one side to the other. When all the pencil marks are gone, you know you covered the entire space. So, another way you can do it is if it's a board that's been laying around, it has oxidized, so there's different colors in the wood. Once all the colors are gone and the wood is brighter and more fresh looking, then you also know you've made it past the oxidation. Some woods it's easier. Cherry, tulip poplar, uh, pine. So now this tells me I've got a little under a sixteenth to remove. 
and that this corner is the thinnest. So I'm going to up the ante here a little bit, advance the iron. Now people don't think a sixteenth is a lot of wood. But go ahead and try to plane it off. I'm down a 64th there. Okay, this, this is low here, and this is low here. So let's go across it. Okay, might be time to back off on that cut. No, <laughs> that was that was about a 64th. All right, I'm a 32nd high there, 32nd high there, 364ths, 364ths, 364ths. So that's how I do it. You can take your marking gauge. If you want, you can get any form of marking gauge and you can set it for your thickness that you want and you can scribe a line all the way around. I find that this, for me, works. Okay, now we're going to lighten that up. So these would make nice little sandwich serving boards. And it is the project that I recommend people do first when they're, when they're just starting out. You can use tulip poplar. You could use pine, I don't recommend it. Uh, soft maple would be nice. Cherry would be good. But I would not use any oak. I would not use walnut. Poplar is a really good wood to practice on. It's affordable, it works nice. And if you can get quarter sawn like I have here, it stays nice and flat. So it gives you the opportunity to practice your planing techniques. Now, as I work through the thickness here, I'm about a 64th from final dimension on this side, a little more over here. So as I start working through this, I will also flip it over and test for flatness on the bench. Your workbench needs to be flat, reasonably flat, because you use it, see there's a hollow spot there? And there's none there. So these corners are touching here and here. Now I sight down it and it tells me I've got a couple high spots. You got to be careful too that you don't Hollow it and you don't round the ends. You don't get sawdust underneath it. It's getting there. A little bit, a little bit of a crown right here. So I don't start all the way out at the end. I come in a little bit. And I 
take that little crown off there. And test it again. And that's about it, really. That's how you do it. So, how close are we now? A 64th there. A little less than a 64th there. Almost a 64th there. We're real close. Thick spot is right there. I think there should be like a musical interlude here, you know. Now some of you have asked why I post raw videos and why my face is not on the video. <clears throat> Simply put, and I may have said this, <clears throat> excuse me, in an earlier video, I'm all by myself. I don't have a cameraman. I don't have any way to edit. I'm, how shall I say it? Um, I've got a few challenges there. I, I'm, I'm not technically savvy. And I have some visual challenges. So, <clears throat> I don't do any editing or anything fancy. You get what you get until such time as something can change. I've tried for three years to find somebody to videotape me working. Went to the colleges, went all over. Nobody. All these tech-savvy young people, nobody. They're all busy with whatever it is that young people do. I don't know. Talking on their phones, I don't know. There are multimedia groups nearby. They want like about $5,000 a day to come videotape me. I'm like, well, that's not going to happen. So you get what you get with me. And... Just about there. Now, the next step, after planing these, I'm going to show you a trick I use when working with thin stock for edge jointing there's a little bump somewhere I can feel it can't see it but we're going to assume it's right there or right there So the trick that I use for, we'll call this good enough, it's very close. And so I don't know if you can see this, we'll try to get this on camera, but my uh, dial indicator is 64th inch increments. And all I do is check it, so right there, it's just above 5 eighths right at 5 8 just a hair above and right at 5 8 it's good enough so that's that we don't need this anymore we don't need that anymore so uh, many of you may know and if you don't I'll kind of explain it when you work on your bench, you need some sort of a bench hook. And you can't see all of that, can you? Can we move it back here? Yeah, here we go. We'll move it back within the camera. There we go. So this is a very simple bench hook. <clears throat> Made this a while back to act like a shooting board. 
But this does not really work well if you want to cross cut your work. And I'll show you why in a minute. What I do on my bench and I use newsprint. I lay a piece of newsprint down making sure there's no dust on the bench and then I put bench hook over that newsprint and make sure this is smooth right here. Okay, that's down. I close the vise on it. That's not going anywhere. Why the newsprint? Very simple. Some of you may have experienced that if you lay your plane down on its side on your bench and you go back and forth dozens of times you leave black iron marks on your bench or you may scratch your bench so I do this and it's just newsprint okay and if you want you can even take a little bit of your oil and strike it on there and set it in place and move it back and forth and that oil goes into the newsprint and you're good to go so, if you're making a fancy shooting board, you would have a second board underneath it that's very slick, and then this would rest on that. And if you're cross-cutting, you would also extend it out this way so that when you're done with your cut, you're not cutting your bench. All right. So, I rough cross-cut these when I was preparing the stock. But now we want to straighten and square that edge. I use my planing, my bench hook, which acts as a planing stop, and I'll come back here and I'm pressing down on the workbench. And what that's doing for me while I hold this down is that's keeping me square to this edge. I don't have to teeter-totter the plane up on, in the vise. Let me take a little bit more of a cut here. Okay, you hold it down, you just come along. And this first one is critical because you want to get that one square and straight. I'll show you why. So I look down it, I eyeball down it. If it's straight, it's straight. I see a little bit of a bump, but it is square. So now I'll come back and I'll take cut out of the middle, a second cut out of the middle, and then one final pass. Straight edge it with my eyeball, that's straight and square. So, next is to shoot the end square. Now what I usually do if I know I'm going to trim these off and I know which way the wood is planing, I'll make a little mark so I know which way to plane this for the final pass. On this side I had my line, so I'll put a little bit of a triangle there and that's telling me I have to plane that way. When you're shooting end grain, when you're shooting end grain with a shooting board or even just a bench stop like this, first thing you want to do is knock a little bit of this corner off. So flip it over, put it in here at about a 45, put the heel of your plane in, bring it in and then just, just nick it. Just nick it there so that when you start planing, the end grain you don't 
get blowout on that far end. And you take a fine cut. Don't try to take too much off. I'm holding in and pushing this way a little bit. So there you go. Can you see how nice and clean that is? See, no saw marks, no scratches, no chisel marks, nothing. It's just nice and smooth. You get a little bit of fuzziness at each outer corner, but that's why you put that little chamfer on the corner. You do now, if we want to make this precise, we now measure out 11 inches and make a mark. Take your square using your reference surface, your reference edge, and you can make a pencil mark. Doesn't have to be heavy, just a light one so you see it. Now, you can double check your width on both ends. This one is a sixteenth under six and three quarters. This one is Really, I mean, it's really close to being parallel. So that's where a panel gauge would be nice. So here's what I do. I've got my edge, which we have planed, and I've got my face, which we have planed. Well, edge, end, and this is the other edge. So, being that this is all set up square, I can now come in here and use the shooting board to just parallel. That's it. Straight and square. Take one more. There we go. That's pretty. For a sandwich board, that's as straight and parallel as I need it. Now, you've seen this done, I'm sure, a gazillion times by dozens of people. But when you cross cut something, you want to cut or scribe your fibers cross grain with a knife and you can do it up here as well it just has to be a little bit stops your tear out and here all the way around four sides And that should end up joining those two corners if your work is square. You see what I've done? I started here, I put a scribe line in, I did that edge, I came around, I did this other side, and then that's where they ended up. They ended up mating right, right there. So this is the reason I do not like sawing on my bench hook. If I were to saw right here and I complete the cut, I go into my workbench top. So what I usually do is I'm usually hanging over. You can't see it in the camera, but I'm hanging over the edge of the workbench. 
And this saw, I'll tell you a story about this saw. This is the only saw I have left like this. I have had it, oh, Forty, let's see, 43, 44 years. That's it. It's bingo. It's nothing special, and I keep the tag on it for one. <laughs> I send it out for sharpening and uh, my name's on it it's been rusted it's been left out in the rain yep I was really bad as a teenager it's got a few little kinks in it but I think it might have been a Stanley and uh, I was working in a hardware store as a teenager and I was able to get tools at a discount so I bought some tools but this is probably one of those few tools that I've had all my life. And uh, that one may go with me someday. So there you go. I've got that. I've got that cut a little bit proud of the line all the way around. There's no major tear out. And if there is, it's behind the uh, the scribe line. So now it's time to shoot that. I'm in here. We're going to put a little chamfer on that corner too. I don't want to blow that out. Just a little chamfer, it's not very big. Remember, this hand is pushing towards the stop and in. If you can hook a finger around the end of the piece, that helps too. You can't always do that. So you know you're getting close when your, your knife line starts to actually show up in, in sight. You can actually visually see where that knife line was. I find some of these tasks so intriguing and so pleasurable to discover. I mean, like right now, you see that you can see that little bit of knife edge there. You know you're square. I want to go just up to it. There's just a little hair of it showing there still. And that's it. It's all gone. Starting to get that little little bit of a fuzz on the top and bottom and we're good there part one of making a cutting board is done that's it folks you feel like a superhero when you're first starting out and you make something that's just a board these edges are done and that's done after this, I'm going to come back tomorrow and I'm going to put some edge treatment on here. It could be as simple, simple as a chamfer. It could be a chamfer into a round and you can do it on the corners. I'm not sure I want, <clears throat> how I want to do all of these. <clears throat> these are going to be a gift. Um, not sure yet. But that's all there is to it. If you were building something, a carcass of some sort, some sort of chest, a box, a crate, that's the basic principle 
on how to prepare a piece of stock. If you're making a shelf, this is now ready to go and get assembled as a shelf. Okay. You could either put a, a dado in here or a dovetail key, sliding dovetail, or you could even just nail it right from the other side, depending on the level of refinement you, your work requires. If you were putting these together this way, you know, any, anything, this is prepped. This is ready to go together. So that's about it for today. I encourage you, if you're new to woodworking, and even if you don't have all the tools, find someone near you who has a few tools, who knows how to use them, and go over, and don't ask to build a credenza, a bookcase, a coffee table, a dining room set, or even a bed. Go over and ask, hey, can you help me make a cutting board? Or you may want to make a cheese serving board or a bread board. You could just put bread on here. Just serve a sandwich on it. And after you finish, I guarantee this, after you finish taking a rough board, planing one face, thicknessing it, even all the way through, there's a lot of ways to do it. You can use the dial calipers like I did. That's a method I particularly like for thin stock. It gets me to within less than a, a, a 64th, because that's gauged by 64ths. That's close enough for me. But you can use the marking gauge, strike a line there, and when you plane down, you see that feather edge start, starting to show up. You can actually just mark it with pencil. Make a pencil marking gauge. Or you can also have, sometimes for certain projects, if I need really thin wood, I'll make one piece and make sure it's perfect, split it in half, and I'll put that on either side, and I use it as a gauge. So when my plane hits that, it can't go any lower. That's for real thin stuff, eighth inch, 332nd, quarter inch, you know, things like that. But if you're new to woodworking, by the time you make a couple hundred cutting boards, You'll have the planing, the sawing, the layout skills necessary to move on to building a box, a toolbox, with simple square butt joints or rabbit and butt or, or even dado. Woodworking is not difficult, everybody. but you have to follow some of the rules. Come back tomorrow. We're going to put some, uh, I'm going to think on this overnight and put some sort of decorative edge on this that's simple to do, that anyone can do. Um, and then we may go off into another little realm of adding a little bit of a, of maybe a, um, a grip, some sort of a grip under here. So I hesitate doing that because when you make something like this, it's usable on both sides. If you put the grip just on the bottom and you flip it over, it's there. So maybe I won't, but uh, maybe I'll show you on a scrap how to do that if you want to make a grip. Um, but that's it. I want to thank you for sharing this time with me, and if you found something helpful, useful, give it the old thumb, thumbs up. There we go. Uh, or if you found it entertaining, but uh, share it with everybody else, and uh, 
that helps support the channel and perhaps over time I'll share some more stories about where I started um, lots of stories I apprenticed under a Dutchman that hit me in the head with a crowbar one day yeah maybe that's what happened to me but uh, <laughs> You did whatever the apprentice, to, the master told you. So head out to your shop. Go make some shavings. Walter out.